Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. In this video, I'm going to show you five tips and tricks that will make your life easier when working with pivot tables in Excel. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo files from the link in the description below. Trick number one fixes a real annoyance. Have you ever noticed that when you refresh a pivot table, your carefully crafted column widths get reset? And it's not just a refresh that causes that to happen. Adding and removing fields, sorting, applying a filter, in fact, pretty much any change you make to a pivot table results in the widths of the columns being set to auto fit. Auto fit meaning the column width is determined by the biggest entry in that column. Here I've got three pivot tables and I've spent some time setting the column widths to make sure that the charts below the pivot tables are big enough for people to be able to actually read them. But watch what happens when I refresh the pivot tables because the underlying data has changed. To refresh the pivot tables, click on Data, Refresh All. The column widths all change and as I said, it can be quite annoying. Luckily, there's an easy fix. So I'll just undo that refresh. Click into one of the pivot tables and go to Pivot Table Analyze and then click the Options button on the left hand side of the ribbon. And in the Layout and Format tab, that's the first tab, take the tick out of Auto Fit Column Widths on Update and click OK. Now, as you can see, it does reset some of the formatting. So I'd advise you to do this before applying any custom formatting. Also, the setting applies to just that pivot table. So if you have more than one pivot table in your file, you'd need to do each one. So now when I click Data Refresh All, the column widths do not adjust. There is actually a way to set this as the default, but that will only affect pivot tables created after you change the default. And I'll be showing you that later in this video. The next trick is how to prevent users accessing the underlying data. It's something that I get asked about on a regular basis. You'd have thought that all you need to do is delete the sheet with the data in it. But if someone double clicks a cell in a pivot table that contains a number, Excel creates a new sheet and displays the underlying data that was used to generate the value from that cell. So here, if I double click on B4, I get a new sheet containing just the rows that relate to sales of banana ice cream to customers based in Atlanta. And if I double click on the grand total cell down here, I get another sheet which contains all the data. Now, if you're wondering how that's possible, it's because a copy of the source data is stored in memory, in what's known as the pivot cache. Some people say that the double click feature is actually useful, and it is in certain circumstances when you want to drill down and get the data that relates to a particular value. But it also has its downside that, as I've shown you here, someone could easily regenerate the raw data. To prevent that happening, click anywhere in the pivot table and go to Pivot Table Analyze and click the Options button on the left hand side. Go to the Data tab and untick the box that says Enable Show Details and click OK. And now, when I double click on a cell containing a number, nothing happens. I get this message that says we can't change part of the pivot table, but it doesn't generate a new sheet. Now, like tip number one, this setting is on a pivot table by pivot table basis and can also be set to be unticked as a default for new pivot tables, something which I'll show you shortly. Now, have you ever wondered what Show Report Filter Pages does? If you've never seen it, it's on the drop down menu just next to the Options button on the Pivot Table Analyze menu. This pivot table has flavours in the filter section, and that gives us a filter drop down in columns B and C. 
I know most people prefer to use slicers rather than the old style filter, but bear with me on this. I don't want to use the filter for its intended purpose, i.e. filtering the pivot table by flavour. But to use the show report filter pages, I have to have something in the filter section of the pivot table panel. So now, if I go up to the Analyze tab, click the arrow next to Options and click Show Report Filter Pages and then click OK. What Excel has done is it's created a new sheet for each flavour. A few points to note here. The formatting of the original pivot table is retained, colours, fonts and so on. But as you can see here, the column widths of the original pivot table aren't copied across. So you'll either need to set those manually on each pivot table or tick the auto fit column widths on update on the original pivot table. Yes, I know I said not to, but there's always the exception to the rule. So if I close this file down, without saving and then reopen it. In the original pivot table, go up to Analyze, Options and tick Auto Fit Column Widths on Update. And then go back to the arrow next to Options and select Show Report Filter Pages. And now you can see that each column is set to its Auto Fit Width. Any updates to the raw data will be reflected in all the pivot tables if you use Data Refresh All, because all pivot tables have their data source set to the same data source as the original pivot table. However, any changes to the original pivot table, such as formatting, sorting, or adding or removing a field, aren't reflected in the pivot tables generated from show report filter pages. The best thing to do would be to delete the generated sheets and run show report filter pages again. Now, some people want the functionality that show report filter pages offers, but don't want the filter to be visible on the initial pivot table. That's OK. I can just hide that row. The feature show report filter pages still works. Finally, if the original pivot table is based on data in the data model, Show Report Filter Pages can't be used. The option is greyed out. Apart from that, it's a pretty quick way to create a separate pivot table for each item in the filter. Trick number four relates to the top three options on the Report Layout button on the Design menu. Compact Form, Outline Form, Tabular Form. I've created three pivot tables and applied a different layout to each. Apart from the colour, can you spot the difference? With a simple pivot table like this, there appears to be no difference, apart from the tabular layout has grid lines. Although, if you turn off the display of the grid lines for the worksheet, they disappear from the pivot table too. Where there is a difference is when you have multiple items in the rows section. These pivot tables have flavour and location in the rows section. With compact, which is the default, both items, flavour and location, are in a single column, with the child item slightly indented. With outline, the child items are in a separate column, starting one row below the parent. And whilst with tabular layout, we have the grid lines, but also the child items begin on the same row as the parent items. But that's actually not what I wanted to show you. In this pivot table, I have flavour and location. And I'll change the word row labels to say flavour. And I'll change column labels to say location. Now, in the pivot table panel, I'll swap flavour and location round. So drag location to rows and flavour to columns. And what it's done, because I manually typed in the headings, they haven't updated. B2 should say flavour and A3 should say location. So I'm going to close the file down without saving and reopen it.
go back to the pivot table I was working on and then change the layout to either tabular or outline. It doesn't actually matter which. So click on the design tab, report layout, and I'll choose tabular. And what it's done, it's automatically used the field names as the headings in A3 and B2. I don't have to change them from row labels and column labels. And if I swap them around in the pivot table panel, so drag customer location to rows and flavor to columns, it swapped them around there too on the pivot table. Wouldn't it be good if you could change the default to tabular or outline? Well, funny I should say that, because that's what I'm going to show you next. How to change some of the default settings for pivot tables. What I'm about to show you isn't available in all versions of Excel. At the time of recording, it's only available if you're an Excel 365 subscriber or you have Excel 2019 or Excel 2021. Although I do believe it is available in some versions of Excel 2016. I'm going to start with a blank workbook and go to File, Options, and click on Data. And then click Edit Default Layout. Any changes that I make here will affect new pivot tables created in any workbook. So if I want to set the default report layout to tabular, I can do that from here. If I want to set auto fit column widths on updates to off by default, then click pivot table options and untick auto fit column widths on update. Pretty much every aspect of pivot tables can be controlled from here. So click on OK and OK again and OK again and then close this file down. I'm then going to open this file called defaults and create a new pivot table. The pivot table is going to show revenue by flavor. And you can see the layout is tabular. We know that because it says flavor in A3 and not row labels. And if I go to the options button on the analyze ribbon, auto fit column widths on update is not ticked. So there we are. There are many little tips and tricks related to pivot tables, but these are some of my favorite ones. If you have a favorite tip, trick or shortcut and it didn't make the cut, why not let me know about it in the comments below? If you found the video useful, please give it a like and make sure that you subscribe for more. If you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments. I also have a free weekly newsletter packed with tips and tricks to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up for that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.